For this next section, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the trachea itself. Now, your trachea is your windpipe. This is the thing that stays open so that air can always easily pass from the external environment into the lungs. It's kept open by these rings of cartilage that go around it that we call tracheal cartilage. I know, they're cartilage. They go around the trachea. They look round. They're actually not completely round. They're shaped like a C, and I'll show you in another picture what the back of the trachea looks like. Um, they're connected top and bottom to each other by a set of ligaments that hold them in place and hold them to the trachea. And then remember that the esophagus runs along behind your trachea. This is a microscope slide showing the histology of the trachea. Here you can see the tracheal cartilage, that's hyaline cartilage, and it ends here and this little band of tissue across here is the trachealis muscle. And it actually holds the two sides of this ring of cartilage. And when you need to uh, expel air quickly, such as when you're coughing, uh, this contracts. It also relaxes when you swallow so that the esophagus can expand and push against this. So as the esophagus expands, as you swallow, the trachealis muscle is going to relax and push in so that that food can pass down the esophagus. When we look at the trachea more close up, we see again pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, just like in the nasal cavity, lots of goblet cells making mucus. And they're making this thick layer of mucus that covers the cilia. Now, for those of you wondering how the cilia are moving if they're covered in a layer of mucus, good question. They're actually, there's a layer of saline uh, between between the cells and the mucus. So the cilia are actually sitting in a layer of saline, which they can move very easily. And then the mucus is sitting on top of that. So we've got this epithelium, then the basement membrane, then we've got lamina with uh, connective tissue, the submucosa with all of the blood vessels in it there. Um, the goblet cells create the mucus layer. The mucus layer traps dust particles and any other particles that are in the air that you breathe. And then the movement of the cilia moves the mucus with those dust particles in it up and out of the trachea. We're gonna have this same mechanism all through the bronchi, through the lungs. So whenever you breathe in any kind of particles, like dust or smoke or anything like that, the mucus is going to trap those particles. And then the movement of the cilia moves that mucus up and then out of the respiratory system. And you're going to swallow it into the esophagus, actually. Um, unless you do that gross thing, please don't do that. And if you do that, don't do it onto the sidewalk, OK? Do it. Do it into the street, okay? But people walk on the sidewalk and nobody wants to step in that, okay? So please don't do that. Also, hey, if you're smoking, then you're putting a lot more particles into this mucus and essentially making these cilia work harder than they need to. So one of the ways in which smoking damages the lungs is that it actually starts to break down these cilia lining the trachea and the bronchi. So I know you don't need to be told not to smoke. You've already heard it before, but don't smoke. Now, if your trachea does get blocked or collapsed, doctors can do what they call a tracheotomy. Remember, otomy means to cut. So tracheotomy is just cutting the trachea, and that is going to bypass the blockage and allow air to pass into the lungs. So this happens, uh, this is done, for example, when someone is choking. Choking most often happens when something gets stuck under the epiglottis so that air can't pass into the larynx. 
by opening a passage here, you enable the air to bypass the blockage and go into the lungs. So the way it's done is the doctor makes a cut between the two sterno uh, thyroid, or excuse me, sternohyoid muscles that run along here. Uh, and they cut through the tracheal cartilage and the bands holding them together. Uh, and then they use spreaders to pull apart the thyroid gland itself and all the muscles and fat and tissue. And then they put a tube into that hole, suture up the rest of the cut. And then uh, if the tracheotomy is gonna have to stay there, then they will uh, put a strap to hold it onto the skin. If it's just an emergency, then um, they will, uh, for example, if someone's choking, uh, they may not do this. They may be able to then go in and get the blockage out and then take the trachea out, tracheotomy out and um, close it up more quickly. So that's the trachea. And then um, let's review very, oh, sorry, we're not done with the trachea, oops. The trachea splits at the bottom to form the, the main bronchi. The right one is on the right, the left one is on the left, I know. Uh, and between the, uh, where, sorry, where the trachea splits, there's this special piece of cartilage called the carina. The carina is this piece, kind of looks like a bikini bottom, doesn't it? Sometimes it's just a little triangle. Uh, and it creates the division between the right and left main bronchus. Each of these main bronchi, remember bronchi is plural of bronchus, are going to supply air to one of the lungs. And then from that point, the main bronchi branch, and in our next segment, we're gonna talk about those branches.